what's up everybody we're not playing no cheap tournaments today we are buying into the biggest tournament of my entire life ten thousand four hundred dollars at the wpt main event we're going to be playing against some of the best of the best in the entire world and we're here at level one blinds are going to be 300 500 and i'm going to get dealt king queen offshoot in the big blind as usual you all already know i love any hand with a lady in it so what a good way to start off this tournament and it's going to fold all the way around to my opponent on the button they're going to open to 1000 small blind is going to fold and i'm going to be put it in the call so we're going to be going heads up to a flop of queen nine four two hearts and my lady's already helping me already we have top pair second best kicker only going to be behind hands like ace queen pocket nines pocket fours and king nine suited or king nine offsuit basically so feeling pretty good about this hand so far and not being a pre-flop progressor i'm going to start out with a check my opponent they're going to be putting in a small bet here to make it a thousand to go and we are pretty deep here going to be taking a passive route here i just decided to flick in the call we go to the turn and it comes the king of diamonds pretty good turn here we now have top two pair on this board in a single raised pot but i have to keep one thing in mind my opponent could possibly have jack 10 which means that they would have the nuts right now i do still have to tread a little bit cautiously here and also still have to worry about some flush drawers my opponent could have been see better on the flop as well so hopefully no heart comes on the river and i'm going to be checking the turn my opponent puts out a bet of three thousand and relative to what's in the pot this isn't the biggest bet in the world so i shouldn't have too much to worry about with my opponent's size in here and we're still going to take the passive route here i'm just going to be flicking in the call and we're hoping for a clean river we go to it and it comes the ten of clubs now that is the worst river i could see well i mean the worst river would be a ten of hearts but still this is pretty bad not looking pretty good here i do check my option and just pretty much hoping my opponent does not fire another bet here for that triple barrel on the river and after a couple of seconds they do check back i turn over my cards and i show my king queen offsuit and they muck what a great way to start off the biggest tournament of my life and next hand i'm going to get dealt ace five offsuit in the big blind once again and it's going to fold all the way to my opponent in cutoff position they're going to be open in the 1200 button is going to fold small blind is going to put in a call and hey i'm going to join the party i put in a call as well so we're going to be going three ways to a flop of ace ace six two clubs don't have a club in my hand so i have to be a little bit worried about that but i do flop trip aces there's only one ace left in the deck so looking pretty good here so far small blind puts in a check i put in a check and surprisingly cut off checks their option back and the reason it is so surprising is because yeah ace a6 my opponent has just a shit ton of aces in their hand that's why i said i do have to be a little bit worried but with them checking back here i mean i don't ever see them having an ace because who slow plays an ace here that would just be the most ridiculous thing i've ever seen in my life but yeah we're still gonna be three-handed going to the turn and it's gonna come to three of clubs now that is a bit of a worrisome turn did not want that front end flush draw to get there but it's here we do still have some boat outs as well a five could come or the board could pair with a six or a three small blind puts in a check and i'm not going to allow my opponents to realize equity if anybody only has a single plus card in their hand like a single club whether it's the king of clubs jack of clubs queen of clubs cannot just let cut off check back and realize their equity so i'm going to be putting on a bet here not going to be a massive one i'm just testing the waters to see where i'm at i grab my chips i make it three thousand to go cut off is going to be put it in a call but small blind is going to be folding so at least we thin out the field so we're going to go heads up to the river and it's going to come a rubber ducky two of diamonds pretty much a blank here not worried about much with this card coming in and not going to give my opponent the chance to check back i'm going to be firing another bet here i grab my chips and i make it seven thousand to go and surprisingly they go into the tank yeah just a small pot but they're tanking for like 20 seconds 30 seconds and then they finally muck their cards face up and they show pocket kings and while they were folding they said i'm gonna respect that bet and that's crazy that they're folding pocket kings here i mean it's a bit tight at this stage of the tournament we have so much chips for them to not pay me off here is pretty surprising but hey guess they had a read or something or like they said they respected my game so kudos to them for finding the fold with pocket kings the cowboys 
and next hand i'm going to get dealt ace queen offsuit in cutoff position it's going to fold to my opponent in low jack they're going to be open at 1200 and it folds to me and it's time to bump up the stakes ladies and gentlemen i'm going to be putting in that three bet in position i bump it up all the way to 5400 and it folds all the way back to around to my opponent and looks like they're going to be put it in the call so we're going to be going heads up to a flop of jack 10 9 two clubs decent flop here don't have a club in my hand though but i am open ended two to nuts an eight could come and i'm feeling pretty good about it and if a king miraculously rolls off on a turn on a river and my opponent has a queen they would never suspect that I have the nut straight versus their second nut straight. And my opponent's going to start out with a check. And I did think about it for a little bit here, maybe 10 to 15 seconds if I should ever be C-betting. But I want to pot control here this early in the tournament and being this deep. Don't want to just start inflating random pots like this one. And especially getting checked raised here would be brutal. So I do check my option back. We go to the turn and it comes another rubber ducky. Two of diamonds. A blank once again. And it looks like my opponent realizes that and he starts to grab chips. They're going to be firing out a bet here. They make it 8,000 to go. And pretty decent sized bet compared to what's in a pot. But can't go anywhere yet. I'm drawing well. And also my ace high could possibly be good. They can just have nothing right now and just trying to steal. So we can't let them push us around and be a bully. So I take my chips and I flick in a call. We go to the river and it comes to three of spades. Not the river I wanted to see. Now I'm just sitting here with ace high and I see at the corner of my eye, my opponent is grabbing more chips once again. And this time they're sizing up even more. They're going to fire out a bet of 25,000. And yeah, really not much I can do here with ace high. Not going to go and start calling this off here versus this big bet. It's okay. We'll pick a better spot. So I take my cards. I lay it down. We're going to have to move on to the next hand. It looks like it's pocket pair time. We're going to wake up with a really good one pocket tens black tens in early position under the gun is going to be coming in with a pretty massive open here three x in it making it 1500 to go and this time around i opt to not three bet sometimes you can three bet here sometimes you can flat and i'm gonna go with a left flat here i just put in a call folds all the way to my opponent in small blind and they're not grabbing 1500 chips no they're gonna be putting in that three bet squeeze Versus the both of us in early position. And they're going to be bumping it up all the way to 7,500. Under the gun thinks about it for a couple of seconds. And they fold. And can't go anywhere with pocket tens. And we're going to be in position. But I do have to keep in mind this 3-bet squeeze is extremely strong, ladies and gentlemen. I have to proceed with caution. But yes, I do end up flicking in the call. So we're going to be going heads up to a flop of King 10-7 two diamonds oh my goodness biggest tournament of my life and i just flopped second best set on this board i am just praying and hoping my opponent does have that fabulous ace king or even pocket aces and i really have to hope that this freaking guy does not have pocket kings because jesus it's not going to end well let's just hope and keep our fingers crossed that that does not happen and my opponent's going to continue the story that they have a strong hand. They are repping an extremely strong range here. They grab their chips. They put in a C-bet. They make it 5,000 to go. And there are two diamonds on the board. But I'm not going to put in a raise here. No, 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 no. No raise for me. Just going to be putting in that smooth call in position. And let's evaluate what we're going to do on the turn. And we're going to go to it. And it comes the four of spades. Perfect turn card, not a four of diamonds, not an ace, nothing connecting with the board. Love to see it. And my opponent is still firing. I mean, I'm loving it. Heartbeat is starting to race right now, but I am loving that they are grabbing chips and firing that double barrel in this three bed pot. They're going to be making it 20,000 to go. And I am aware at how much chips I have behind here, but should I raise in position or should I just put in a call? Let me know what you would do in this exact spot in the comments below, whether it's this tournament or maybe even a lower buy-in. Just let me know. And after deliberating for a bit, I am not going to be putting in that raise. Nope. We're just going to be putting in that smooth call once again. So I grab my chips and I put in a call. Really need a good river dealer. We need it to be clean. And we're going to go to it. And it comes an eight ball corner pocket of clubs. No diamond on the river. 
Now this card is connected with the board. A hand like 6-5 gets there, a hand like Jack-9 gets there, but what the hell are the odds of my opponent put it in a 3-bet squeeze in a $10,400 tournament versus early position from small blind with those cards and hands? There's no way in hell. If they have that, kudos to them. I guess I'm packing my bags kind of early, and we're going to have to go home. And after the river card, they do think about it for a little bit, and they announce to the dealer they're going to be all in, and I'm like... Oh, baby, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. I look down at my cards, make sure that I still have pocket tens because you don't ever want to make a mistake and not check your cards when you're about to call off for almost all of your chips. Well, they do have me covered, so it's going to be for all of my chips. And I do see that I have pocket tens and I say to them out loud, well, I only lose to one hand because in my mind, I felt I only lost to pocket kings and I let them know. If you have it, you have it, nothing I can do. And I put in a call and they turn over their hand and it's Jack five of spades. Are you fucking kidding me? Jack five of spades. They are insane. One of the biggest buys you can enter into in Vegas during the WPT and they just three bet squeeze triple barrel bluffed with Jack five suited. This is pretty insane. I have to clap it up to them for making this crazy, insane bluff. Obviously, it's very hard to call a triple barrel here for your tournament life. But with pocket tens, I couldn't go anywhere. And once again, it is insane. But ladies and gentlemen, this is pretty much a punt. Yes, this is a punt. Do not ever three bet squeeze. Jack five suited in the small blind versus any position. I don't care where the other people are. You're just going to be lighting the money on fire. I'm happy that they did this because they pretty much gifted me all of these chips this early in the tournament. I am now up to 178,000 chips, almost 2x starting stack, and we're still in the first level of the tournament. Let's get it. It might be my time to find a deep run and a really big buy-in. And we're now going to be in level two of the tournament. Blinds are going to be 300, 600. And don't forget, every big blind is going to have to put in that ante as well. And I'm going to get dealt ace queen suited in big blind, another big blind special. I am catching some heat in this tournament already to start it off. It's going to fold around to my opponent and cut off. They're going to be opening for 1200. And this is the same person I've been battling a little bit with already. Looks like we're going to have to battle again. But unfortunately, Button is going to come in with a three bet and they make it 4,200 to go. Small blind is going to fold and I'm here with two options. I can either put in a call or I can put in a four bet. Folding is not an option. So it's either call or four bet. And yes, I'm going to go with the latter option. I'm going for it as usual. You already know how I like to play. I grab my chips. I'm going to be putting in that sexy code four bet. Bumping it up all the way to 13,200, roughly 22 big blinds. Not roughly, it's exactly 22 big blinds because that's the size I used. <laughs> Cutoff is going to be folding, and I'm okay if button folds, but no, they decide they're going to be putting in the call. And we're going to have a massive code for bad pod here with just the two of us. We're going to see a flop of ace, deuce, deuce, rainbow. Nice flop here with ace queen suited i'm only behind two ace king right now i'm feeling pretty good about my hand let's hope we don't run into it and i can make some money in this pot i also do like that there's no plus draws on board and i'm gonna be firing a c bet here of course after putting in that code four bet no way in hell i'm gonna check here so i grab my chips i'm gonna put on a bet and it's just gonna be a small one i'm just gonna be making it 5400 to go and after a couple of seconds my opponent's gonna be coming along with the call we go to the turn and it comes the seven of diamonds. The backdoor flush draw of diamonds is now starting to come in. Do have to worry about that a little bit, but that's not going to slow me down here. I'm still firing that double barrel. My hand is just way too good here. So I grab my chest, preparing to make the bet. I'm going to be firing 7,800 on the turn. My opponent does take a little bit longer this time, but it looks like they're still not going anywhere yet. They're going to be putting in the call and we go to the river and it comes the 10 of clubs. Decent river here. My opponent could have pocket tens, but I believe that they would fold that on turn, so I'm not too worried about it. So it's pretty often. I'm going to have the best hand here. Like I said, I'm only behind to ace king and pocket aces, which would be really hard for them to have, right? That would suck if they have aces. But yeah, 
I am still betting. Yes, still betting. I like my hand. What can I say? And it has a lady in it, so I like it even more. I'm going to be firing that triple barrel. We're loading up the clip. I'm going for it. And I grab my chips. Still going to be putting out a small bet. I make it 12,000 to go. My opponent goes into the tank this time for about 30 seconds, 45 seconds, even a whole minute goes by. And then they elect to finally just put in a call. I turn over my cards, say I have ace queen, and they turn over sadly ace king offsuit. So they are going to take down a pot with the king kicker there. I do feel like I lost the minimum, but just an unfortunate but fortunate run out, I guess. I mean, if a queen came, it would have been really nice. I would have still got paid. But at least I didn't lose a shit ton of chips in this pot. Like I said, my opponent could have a lot of ace king. I was aware of this. So it's okay. It's cool. We just won a big pot. It's okay to lose here. No problem. Let's just keep it together and move on to the next hand. And we're now going to be moving on to level three of the tournament. Blinds are going to be 400, 800 with an 800 ante. And I'm going to get dealt a cent offsuit in the big blind. It seems like every hand this entire tournament I've just been playing in the big blind, right? I don't know can't get any cards in any other position apparently and we're gonna have multiple limpers in this pot we have people in an early position limping middle position limping button limp. everybody's freaking just limping it's a limp party and when it gets to me i decide yeah no point in iso in here i'm just gonna check my option let's take it to a flop and it's gonna be a family pot it's gonna be six of us and we're gonna be going to a flop of four deuce king all clubs whole baby and we have the ace of clubs in my hand i just need the board to come one more club and i would have the stone cold nuts really hoping i can find the club at some point small blind's gonna check i'm gonna check and looks like it's a check party everybody at the table is checking nobody's betting which is understandable on this monotone flop and texture so we're gonna be going still six ways to a turn and it's gonna come my lady, the queen of hearts. Would have loved if it was the queen of clubs, but hey, what can you do here? At least I am also drawing to a straight now. A jack in a river would be nice, or I can still just hit a club. Looks like small blind is finally deciding to put out a bet here. They do grab their chips, make it 2,200 to go. Not gonna get crazy here, just way too many people in the pot. Would love to just get to the river as cheaply as possible. So grab my chips, I put in a call. And a lot of my opponents in middle positions and early positions, they're going to be folding. But Button says they have a good enough hand. They're going to be putting in the call too. So the field has thinned out. There's only going to be three of us going to the river and it's going to come to nine of hearts. So yes, unfortunately, I do not make the stone cold nuts. I'm just sitting here with ace high, just the ace of clubs. Nothing really too good about this hand pretty much. And small blind grabs their chips and they're going to be putting out a bet of thirty five hundred dollars i'm like what like what the hell is this this bet is super tiny into this pretty decently sized pot now what are they trying to say and what are they trying to do here and to be honest i took it as they're trying to get the showdown pretty cheap here and am i really going to allow that to happen like am i really going to of course not i'm going for it yes we're making a crazy fucking play here in this tournament no fear if you want to run deeps in tournaments ladies and gentlemen you can't always put money in the pot when you have a hand so yes i'm grabbing my chips i'm putting in that big ass raise in position put it up to the test with this small ass bet that they decided to make and i'm going to be bumping it up all the way to eighteen thousand five hundred. I pretty much almost 6x their bet in position saying, yo, I got a flush. You want to call? Go ahead. But it's going to be really fucking hard for you to make this call. And Button thinks about it for maybe 10 seconds. They lay it down and then Small Blind goes into the tank. And I like that they're going into the tank. I fade the snap. That's what you got to do when you're bluffing. You just got to fade the snap. So I'm feeling pretty good. But after almost 45 seconds goes by, they end up just flicking in the call. And I'm like, oh my goodness, they call. I turn over my stone cold bluff and they turn over the queen high flush with queen five of clubs. Are you kidding me? They had the second nuts. And the crazy thing with them having the second nuts here that they did not even think about putting in a three bit here. I guess they just said, well, nobody's going to call here. 
But I don't know. I mean, would you have put in a three bet there? Would you have even gone for the bluff in my spot in his limp pot? I always say don't go broke in a limp pot. But hey, shit happens. Let me know what you think about everything and how you would have played each of our hands in the comments below. I do stand by my play. I love it. You got to go for it if you want to run deep in a 10K buy-in. And well, behold, I'm in big blind again, but we're going to get dealt the rockets pocket aces now this is really a big blind special if i've ever seen one love to see it and it's gonna fold all the way to my opponent in hijack digging me open in the 2000 folds the button digging me put it in the call small blind is gonna fold and yes you already know what time it is we're gonna be putting in that three bet squeeze i grab my chips i'm gonna be bumping it up all the way to 7500 hijack does fold but button once again is going to be putting in the call this is the same person who i've been battling the whole day who had the ace king hand so yeah we're doing some battling again but this time i have the upper hand let's see if they have ace king again this time so yeah we're going to be going heads up to a flop is going to come king seven deuce two diamonds oh please have ace king so i can get the maximum here in this pot it is a really dry board in the sense that the cards are not connected, but there is a flush drawer of diamonds on the flop. I do not have the ace of diamonds in my hand, so my opponent will have more combinations of flush drawers, but that's fine. No problem. I'm not worried. And I do grab my chips. Going to be putting in that seabed, of course, with the best hand, which hopefully is the best hand. And I'm firing away with a massive seabed this time. No small ones here. I'm going to be making it 12,200 to go. And my opponent thinks about it for a couple of seconds, but they're not going anywhere yet. That's beautiful. I want you to come along. They put in a call. We go to the turn and it comes a four of diamonds. All right. I was really happy and now I'm really sad. Did not want to see a diamond on turn. My opponent could have flushes now. Have to tread with caution. Could sometimes bow here, but this time around, I'm not going to do that. I do decide to check my option. And after a couple of seconds, my opponent's going to be doing the same thing. They check back. Thank you. That's what I want to see. Don't want to see this part building with a flush on board. Hopefully the river is not another diamond. And we go to it and it comes the five of spades. I like this river. Pretty good here. Not too connected to the board. And I'm not going to allow my opponent to take over the aggression in the pot here. They didn't bet on the turn. I'm hoping they didn't check back a flush. But it's one way to find out. I got to do the better myself. I can still get called by hands that I'm ahead of. So I do take my chips and I'm going to fire another massive bet here on the river. I make it 26,000. And within a second, my opponent just mucks their card. So I guess they just didn't have a hand that's good enough to call. But no problem. I'm happy to take it down with Rocket Aces of the Rockets. And blinds are going to be going up again. It's now going to be a level four. We've been playing for three hours now. Each level has been 60 minutes. And we're going to wake up with the best start in hand in poker with blinds at 500, 1000, and a 1000 ante. Ace King offsuit in early position. Finally, we get a good hand and we're not in big blind. Took long enough for this to happen. But hey, better late than never, right? And I'm going to be opening, of course. I'm right before low jack. I make it 2200 to go. Boats the cutoff. They're going to be putting in the call button puts in the call small blind folds and then big blind decides to put in the three bad squeeze and they're gonna bump it all the way up to eleven thousand. i'm like eleven thousand. uh yeah i could get with this i do notice that my opponent is a euro reg so because of this reasoning i know that they're gonna have some good three bet squeezes and they're gonna have some bad three bet squeezes so with that being said I could flat here, but the problem with flatten means that everybody behind me is going to flat too because they're going to start to get some really good odds, right? So not going to be doing that. Going to hope that my opponent doesn't have that good of a hand. So I'm going to be going for it. Yes, another four bet in this $10,000 tournament. I am playing to run deep, ladies and gentlemen. I grab my chips. I'm going to be bumping it up. I make it 24000 to go. And I do get my wish. I thin out the field. Cut off folds, button folds. I'm okay if big blind folds, but hey, looks like they're not. They're going to be flicking in the call. So we're going to be going heads up in another four bed pot. Some pretty big pots in this tournament, right? To a flop of ace, 10 queen, two spades. 
Now, I don't have a spade in my hand, but I have top pair, top kicker, and I'm drawing to the nuts if I can find a jack on the turn or the river. So I'm feeling really good about my hand and I'm in position. This time I'm not out of position. I'm in position in this four bet pot. And of course, my opponent not being a pre-flop aggressor, he knows better to lead here. He's gonna start out with a check and I do grab my chips. I'm gonna be putting out a small wager. I make it 10,000 to go. And after about five seconds or so, my opponent announces they're gonna be all in. Are you kidding me? They go all in for 70,700 chips. Pretty much a 7x jam. There was already 50,000 in a pot from pre-flop plus the 10,000 I bet. So it's relatively almost a pot size bet, but this is a massive check raise in a four bet pot. And believe it or not, I don't put in the call yet. I go into the tank and I tank and I tank and I tank. And yeah, I must have tanked for two minutes, three minutes. Even before I got to the two minute point, I let the table know this is going to take a while. I need some time. And everybody's like, no problem, of course. It's a really big buy-in. Never want to make a snap decision in this spot. So yeah, I'm tanking, hit like the three minute mark. And as I'm doing all of this tanking, I'm thinking about all the hands my opponent squeezes with, going through ranges. What are they going to check raise with? What are they going to call my four bet with, et cetera, et cetera. And yeah, I mean, I really just went through every single hand combination and everything that could freaking happen here. That's what I do all this studying for, and that's what I play all of this poker for, to know what to do in spots like this. And after deliberating, you know, in a cash game, 100 big blinds deep, ain't no way in fucking hell I'm folding here. I tell you that, I'm never folding. I'm putting it in the call. Maybe after like five seconds, we're going to just run it, call it a day. Just can't fold this in cash game. However, in this $10,400 tournament and not because of the buy-in, it's just because of how people play in tournaments. And for him to check jam here, I just don't think he's ever bluffing. Just don't think he's ever bluffing. So after the three and a half minute mark, take my cards and I realize, yo, there's got to be a better spot. It's a long tournament, hour levels. Don't have to gamble and get it in now. I'm just not ahead. And I finally muck my cards. It's okay. We're going to pick better spots. We don't have to get it in here. Let me know what you would have done in this spot in the comments below. Would appreciate it. But yeah, we're just going to have to move on from this one. Our stack takes a bit of a hit here, but it's all right. And it sucks. But after all of those hands, I'm just going to be a little bit above starting stack. I'm at about 105,000 chips. Part two of this video is going to come out in a couple of days with the rest of my journey of day one of this big ass tournament. But if you like cash game videos, make sure you check out this video right here where I flop the nuts and lose. Are you kidding me?